Well, good morning and thank you. And um, uh, my job today is really to demonstrate to you what a fabulous resource UK Biobank is for you to use. So UK Biobank sets out, it recruited half a million people. We did this uh, between 2006 and 2010, so three and a half years to recruit half a million people. To give you the headline figures, 70 million imputed genotypes, we've done that for you. 15 million aliquots of blood, uh, urine and saliva in the uh, uh, freezers. A very, very wide range of physical and functional measurements. Detailed and varied assessments of behaviour and risk factors for almost ele every element of life and lifestyle you can imagine. And long-term follow-up. We're currently at about five years. We plan to go on for at least 20 years, if not 40 or 50. There is general consent for follow-up through all healthcare records and for all types of health research. And the data are available to all bona fide uh, researchers around the world, commercial or academic, for all types of health-related research that is in the public interest. So the thing that you need is that URL, that's where you need to go, that's where you can access the data, and a typical data request will cost you in the order of $2,500 for all the things I'm going to show you now. So we started with half a million people. We went to about 20 uh, recruitment centres around the country. This is the UK, in case you're unfamiliar with it. Uh, we actually uh, didn't go to Northern Ireland. Uh, we've, this was generously funded, uh, particularly by the MRC and the Wellcome Trust, uh, who have paid for the resource for what I'm going to show you to be assembled. Uh, we wrote to half of the middle-aged population of Britain at the time to get our half million people. They were high throughput centres, highly automated. This is 2005. I want you to remember that when we did touchscreen consent in, in UK Biobank, this was two years before the first iPhone even existed. We did very extensive uh, baseline assessments. Uh, we looked at everything from social demographics, ethnicity, physical activity and smoking, all the way through to sexual history, past medical history, noise exposure, psychological exposures, and so on and so forth. We measured everything that we could think of measuring, so blood pressure, heart rate, uh, spirometry, heel ultrasound, and in subsets, so sub-studies of hundreds of thousands of people, hearing tests, vascular reactivity, visual acuity, intraocular pressure, retinal imaging, fitness tests, ECGs. We have done the genotyping. Uh, so uh, all half million have now been genotyped. The data at the moment are available on 150,000, but the full half million will be available to you to use uh, come this autumn. Sorry, that means this fall. Um, and we have uh, uh, imputed uh, 70 million genotypes uh, against uh, UK 10K and 1,000 geno uh, genomes as reference uh, panels, and we've done that work for you. You can have the raw data, you can have the process data, you can have the data as you like, you can redo your imputation. But what I put to you is, in fact, we've done the hard work for you. What have we uh, shown? Well, we have just demonstrated some of the power to give you a flavour of the sorts of things that you can get from these data, but this is our demonstration. It's for you to then use the data to explore the issues. So this is the relationship, uh, the, the hits for height on chromosome four, so obviously just one of the chromosomes. What I've highlighted in red is all the uh, uh, areas where there are previous identified loci. Now you can see that some clearly still stick out. You can also see that some that were previously identified turn out to be not so interesting after all. And you can see that there are some new ones which actually nobody had managed to identify because they didn't have this scale of data. The biomarkers, people say biobank, that means there it, it must be blood involved. Well, of course there's blood involved. Uh, and we are now doing, running a panel of standard cardiovascular markers, markers for cancer, liver disease, renal disease. The urine assessment, so that's in the bottom right-hand corner of this panel, uh, albumin uh, creatinine ratio in particular, will be available this autumn, with the first tranche of all the other assays being available again towards the, the rest, end of this year, and the rest of the full 500,000 these assays being available the beginning of next year. Well, that's not enough. Having recruited half a million people, we now need some follow-up information, and I think that this is one of the major advantages we have in the UK. One of the major advantages is the huge buy-in we've had from our part participants, who, by the, by the way, did this of their own free will, with their own time, and without our money. They did this for free. 
and we're very grateful. And you should be too, because you're going to use the data. Well, I said that. Uh, so we have done web -based, uh, diet, use web-based tools to collect information on diet, on cognitive function, occupational history in hundreds of thousands of people. So as an example, cognitive function in 140,000 people in four months. Activity monitors, 100,000 people for seven days. The imaging assessment, which we, having done all the things that I've just described, we felt that we ought to have a little bit more detail. So multimodal MRI of the brain, of the of, uh, ultrasound of the carotid, MRI of the heart, MRI of the whole body and DEXA. We did a pilot study of all of those things in 5,000 people. We then got the funding uh, to extend that to a full study, and we are rolling out doing 100,000 people over the next three or four years. And then there's record linkage. At the moment, we have record linkage into death, into cancer, into hospitalization registries, what you would think of as claims data. I think that's the, the neatest translation. And that's complete up to 2015 and will continue year on year from hereafter. So to give you some demonstrations of what that might look like, this is the web-based tool we use for participants to enter their own information about their diet, completed by 300,000 people, and hundreds of thousands of people have, have, have repeated it on multiple occasions. The advantage of doing it this way is that actually we can collect the information in a way that the participant understands, but code it behind the scenes without need for extensive uh, um, uh, manual input and interpretation. So the accelerometry data, uh, one can, this is a simple, again, demonstration of what scale can do for you. Uh, we, of course, find that those people who are slightly older, those who are in their 70s, exercise somewhat less than those who are in their 40s. We find that that deterioration, of course, this is cross-sectional, but that deterioration is slightly more marked in men than it is in women. But one of the really interesting things we find is that actually in the morning, and that's what the bottom right-hand panel here is showing you, in the morning, the level of activity between the older and the younger, old and middle-aged perhaps, is fairly similar. But it's in after lunch that then it's that the, the uh, more elderly then have become less active. So you can see patterns during the course of the day that you wouldn't have got if we hadn't scaled this to 100,000 people. And then, this is uh, early morning, if you're in, in, uh, uh, I I here in Stanford. For those of us who are in, uh, from the UK, I have no idea what time of day or night it is. So let's do a cognitive function test done in 140,000 people. Uh, and here, we start with a simple game of snap reaction time. We can do some uh, digit substitution, a bit of logic for us. We can now start to do trail finding. 1A, 2B, 3C, 4D, that's not hard but we can make it harder. And then to make sure that you're all awake and all alert and to test your cognitive function, if Tilda's mother's brother is Tim's sister's father, what relation is Tilda to Tim? And I'm timing you <laughs> behind the scenes so I get information on speed as well as accuracy of response. And then I can use that for population scale grading and uh, population scale validation of the answer. So I can correlate all that with age and of course, with brain size. So this is very simple, again, demonstration data that with scale, you can see what you would, of course, expect to see is that we're using an automated pipeline. Those who are older, uh, as one gets older, sadly, the brain begins to shrink. And one can look at around about 700 or so individual derived variants, which are there in the database. We have incident outcomes. Um, of course, for some outcomes, such as Alzheimer's disease, those are going to take several decades to accrue. Other outcomes, such as diabetes, we already have uh, large numbers of those events. And we are not satisfied with that because we ought to have further phenotyping. So we are currently this year uh, planning to do a cognitive function, uh, sorry, um, a web-based assessment for mental health, uh, to do record linkage through to primary care, at least in the first 200,000 or so people, to look at a panel of infection markers, to collect stool samples, and to do 14-day ECG recordings. And that's this year's plan. Next year, we'll see. So this is my final slide. This is where I tell you how you get to it and what the deal is. The deal is very simple. UK Biobank is available to all bona fide researchers, so we're all here, uh, uh, to looking uh, at uh, health-related research in the public interest. And public interest is very, very broadly defined. There's no preferential or exclusive access. And you don't have to collaborate with me or anybody else that's involved in UK Biobank. You don't have to put me on the paper. You don't have to put any of us uh, uh, cite our work. You simply have to 
I apply for the data and it's yours to use. Now, if you want to work with us, that's fine, but that really isn't the deal. You have to pay for access to the resource, in other words, extracting the data, about $2,500. You have to pay nothing towards the cost of acquiring the resource in the first place. That's what the Wellcome Trust, the Medical Research Council and the other funders have done for you. Access to the samples is a bit harder because, of course, they're a depletable resource. Um, so there's an additional uh, consideration there. And you're re required to return the results and to publish your findings. But the intellectual property remains with you. So if you want to use the data, and I suggest that actually it's quite a good place to start when you're thinking about precision medicine or epidemiology or whatever it might be, here's the URL, and we'd be very pleased to receive your applications. Thank you. <laughs>